we are going to read from Samuel first. Samuel first. Chapter 28 and verse 4. Samuel first. Chapter 28 and verse 4. The Philistines assembled and came and encamped at Sunem. And Saul gathered all Israel, and, en and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord, the Lord did not answer to him either by dreams or or by Urim, or by the prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek out for, the, for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a medium at an door. Now let us go to chapter 30 and verse 1. Still some you first. Now we're reading from uh, chapter 30 and verse 1. Now when David and his men came to Ziklag to the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid against the Negev and against Ziklag. They had overcome Ziklag and burned it with the fire, with fire, and taken captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. They killed no one but carried them off and went their way. And when David and his men came to the city, they found it burned with fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voice and wept until they had no more strength to weep. David's two wives also had been taken captive. A high norm of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in Saul, it for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Achimelech, Bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue after this band? Shall I overtake them? He answered to him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake and shall surely rescue. I mean, two different people, Saul and David. Two people that were uh, that were selected by God to be the kings of the people of Israel. Two people that could be beloved, united, and indeed for the one to help the other and train the other. Indeed, God allowed this to be so that Saul to be the trainer of David and David indeed accepted the edification of the Lord with much love and of course sorrow because Saul became his enemy his arch enemy and he was always trying to find a way to kill David because he knew that he was a king to come to Israel but David as he was a man according to the heart of the Lord he loved especially Saul and his son Jonathan too. And always, as he was humbling himself to the word of Saul, he was truly humbled in front of the eyes of God. And that is why with Saul, God trained David so that he may be a person that would always ask for the direction of the Spirit and God as he as God made it so that David was failing in all that he did by himself but 
David could also be the trainer of Saul. Why? Because twice God delivered Saul into the hands of David and David uh, was did not kill Saul. And that would be the greater edification that Saul would take to change his heart. The second time around though, he changed his mind. He did not repent because David indeed could have killed Saul and Saul said, Blessed you are my son David. Of course you are going to succeed in your ways and you are going to be victorious in your ways. Words that seem like repentance but but instead they not they just change of mind a change of mind and they separated their ways and so went to his own way and David could also be the trainer of Jonathan to whom God has filled the heart with love for David and when Jonathan understood that the that his uh, father Saul was about to kill David he sent him away and they both wept aloud when they were separated and Jonathan said to David go now in peace and as we promised to one another in the name of God as we said that God might be between you and I and between my offspring and your offsprings and David went his way. Jonathan, though, came back to the city. Both of them, Saul and Jonathan, they were dwelling in their own environment. They never moved forward and got near to God. They never accepted the training and edification that God has prepared for both of them from David. And in that way, and because of that rather, the time went by and both of them, Saul and Jonathan and David on the other hand, they reached the end of the deal. But the end of Saul was damnation because now he did not accept the edification of God but he remained in his own schemes and decisions on the other hand on the other hand of david even though that we know that he had a great issue and problem as we read before in ziklag and his men also wanted to stone him but his end was victorious and a new start he did not understand up to that point Saul, even David as well, that God has given one the one to the other as a great opportunity. So that they may be both trained one by the other. They did not understand it. But this is the message that we need to understand today. The person that God is bringing near to you you need to see him as a chance, as an opportunity to be trained by him, for you to be trained by him and for you to train him. He did not bring that person next to you just for your company. God is not interested in companies. God is interested uh, for the coming together of the brothers. And there's a defecation in the gathering of the church. There has to be a defecation in the gathering. In that gathering, there needs to be the law for one another. And when there's love for one another, there's a defecation and build up. We do not choose in the presence of the Lord our uh, companionship, but God is selecting for us. We are not selecting the people that are next to us. Even your wife, you did not cho choose her. And your wife did not choose you. David did not choose Saul. 
Saul did not choose David. Saul and David were both selected by God. You and your husband, you were selected by God. Now the critical point is how you are seeing the person that God has selected to be next to you. Whether that is a companionship in the, the work of the Lord, or a companionship in your household, or a companionship in the way of your walk in the church. If you stand as Saul, seeing with despise, looking over with despise on the person that God sat next to you, that will bring a result to you of you being driven away by God, and God will be driven away from you as well. Because when we are driven away from the work that God has prepared for us and entrusted us with, then in reality we are being driven away by God Himself. How important is it, therefore, the way we see and the way we hear, what we are listening to? Because what we see and what we hear are leading us to the things we do and the way we walk. And even better, the way we walk and the things we do. The path we walk, rather. Because we are people that are same. And our opportunities and our selections are not ours. None of my brothers have I selected. God has brought them in my life. And I wasn't selected by any of my brothers. God brought me to them. God brought me to my wife, and my wife was brought to me by God. God brought my children to me, and me to my children. Now, the critical point is, How am I acting, how we are acting, what we do? And this, and this can be seen by what we say, do or think. How important is it for David to love his trainer? And, he, and that trainer hated David. How important was it? for David to love his trainer, for David to humble himself in front of him, to honor him. How important on the contrary was for Saul to despise and hate David. And now, my dear brethren, let us pay attention. It's uh, very important. If the person we love, God loves. And if the person we do not love, God does not love. If it's, on, uh, if it's upside down, then we have selected the wrong way. And we are going to be brought into the end of things. And uh, during these times, we're going to go through a trial, the last trial. And if that trial, we select to get to the uh, wrong path, then the end is expedient will come to you in close and it will be to damnation but if the trial that is going to be brought in your life is because you pleased God and you continue on doing so then in this trial let us know that the continuation will be glory therefore we each and every one of us individually for our own selves as we see our environment next uh, left and right to to understand what God is about to do in his life from the things that God has done up until now because if our love our care compassion our attention is emotional it's friendly of this flesh let's say then the end the trial of this end will be towards our destruction. But if our love is from God, 
we love with the love of God, with the way that God is loving, that wants all people to be saved, that is paying attention to all peoples, then again we're going to have trials because no one without a trial will enter the kingdom of God. The trial of our faith is the one that confirms whether or not we're going to enter richly or not or by fire into the kingdoms of God if we enter. And it is a trial of our faith. And the message that I believe that God is giving to us today is to be aware of how we are looking around us. Because he says that who is blind by my ser- but my servant? Who is deaf but, by, but the person that I am sending? Because you see, but you are not underst- you, you're not paying attention. And that is the message. You are seeing, but you're not paying attention. You are listening, but you're not paying attention as well. It's very important for us to see and to not criticize as the past of Laodicea did. He was looking at himself as uh, if he was he and he was like so. He was looking at himself and he was glorifying his own self. I'm rich. I need no one. And God, at the end of the day, threw him away, casted him away. But before he would do so, he said to him, "Be aware and buy gold that is tested by me." see to the word of the Lord and see what my plan and work is what does it mean for you to buy gold remember the parable when someone found a treasure in a field and he sold everything he had to buy that field did he make a mistake the answer is no he was correct he saw and understood He did not the field, but rather the gold and the treasure that was in it. On the other hand, the kingdom of God is like a merchant who is selecting uh, precious stones until he found one. That is David in our, our example. And he sold all other things so that he may keep that one precious stone. That is why we are always under uh, criticism, but we also need to pay attention and see clearly and critically of the things in our lives. It's very important for us to pay attention and listen. Saul did not do nothing more or less than what his heart told him to do. That is why. He was God was completely driven away and he was anointed by God. He saddened the spirit. He put off the fire of the spirit in him and the spirit of the Lord was de- was uh distracted. Let's say driven away from Saul and seven w- demons and w- went in him because he was able to see but not understand what the word of the Lord was. He used to see David and he and as he was becoming more blessed by God, he understood that he was anointed by God. And instead of him saying that blessed be your name for your selection and I do thank you for you bringing that person next to me, he decided to kill David and drive him away. He saw, but he did not pay attention. He heard what Samuel said to him what others used to say as they saw David and his wife said and his children and the people of Israel said but he did not hear and the result was that the trial of the end came with the Philistines and he's looking around to find help but there's no one around there's no one to help him says the word of the Lord no one is able to help him. He, it is impossible for someone to help him. Because the only one that can help him is God. When the person therefore has been driven away by God, there is no help. On the other hand, David.
who was brought in a difficult situation of his own, and that difficult situation was Ziklag. It was the place that he found shelter in when he understood that his life was in uh, danger because of Saul. And he reached that area and now he is in great danger and in absolute weakness. And as they came into Ziklag they saw the city burned down and raided and all the children and wives of his own and the people with him were captured, all of them. There was weeping and sorrow and they reached the point of even uh, trying to kill David. The situation is gr difficult, very difficult. He's about to end but God is prepared to help out David. How important is it for us to know surely that God every single moment of our days is a prepared help for us and this is the case only when and to the people that are listening and understanding the word of the Lord that is perfect and good and they are listening and they're paying attention to the word of the Lord it's very important for us to understand how difficult it is and devastating it is for us to lose our way for us to lose the guidance of the Spirit for us to lose the help of God it's very important and very difficult and it's only up to us and it's only depending on our heart with all the security you have with every security secure and not just once but continue on doing so secure your heart because through it all the things in your life come that is why you need to look carefully and see what is happening in your life next to you and understand that God has allowed it that God has selected this God is doing it because the center of the attention of God is you but can you but the question is oh, just me the answer is no all of us but the center of the attention of the Lord as the center of the hatred is of Satan is you as well so there are two centers that are uh, they are paying, uh, playing a role in your life you need to see both of them and see and understand listen and understand the one center is of Satan who is trying with flaming arrows to destroy your faith and destroy your path and the other center is the love of God and by the hope that he's giving you and the understanding wisdom illumination that he's giving you the love that is sending to you he is trying to direct your ways to his good will and God will never allow a test and trial more than you, what you can have and ho hold no matter what is happening in your life is because you are able to handle it and now it's the trial of God to prepare you and make you edified and present you edified in front of God that is why Paul says that you need to study and try to present your bodies edified and tested in front of the eyes of God in other words what does it mean for you to be tested in front of God for you to be a worker that will work on the word of the Lord how as you are uh, bringing the truth because the work of each and every one of us will be brought into judgment it will be tested by fire 
what's your work no matter what it is it's going to be tested by fire if your work that you have built and you continue on building is truly with holiness with understanding with guidance from the spirit gold and precious stones then indeed the fire that will come will edify and make it even better and cleanse it but if your work is with uh, weed and uh, sticks in other words not with gold and precious stones as we said before and you do as you like and as you understand without thinking or paying attention to the fact that fire is going to come without me thinking the word of the Lord that there's going to be testing of your work with fire and I just want to quickly build a nice building very nice indeed because when you when you build with these elements you can indeed end fast the building and you can make it look pretty but I'm not understanding that what I'm building is going to be tested by fire what I am building is going to be tested at the end of the days how important is it for us to see and understand for us to see the walk and uh, the way of our walk and the way we are staying not just Jonathan he was so nice of a brother a faithful person but he actually took the place and stood near his father because his father loved him but the building that he was uh, constructing was uh, again with not golden precious stones even though and he was mistaken because he needed to draw near to David as God wanted to whom and what is your walk and to whom are you drawing near to in the sense of taking care of you are being trained but you are also training but I repeat you are trained but you are training as well your child you are edifying that child but that child is also edifying you because you learn how to become a good parent and you are taking care of letting your child know how to become a good husband or a good wife when he grows up but the point is not our children because our children is something that is natural because there's emotion to it to the relationship we have or there's an issue how do you raise up your child the answer is by the truth of the gospel becoming a worker of the Lord and this is where and this relationship has emotions but what we need to understand is that that by the illumination and uh, revelation let's say of God the people that God has sat next to us so that they can edify us and for us to edify them for us to train them with showing the, our love to them from God that is pouring out into our hearts because we are asking for it and for them to edify us with humbling with humility with a broken heart as we accept all the word, word of the Lord because the destruction of Ziklag is going to come your Ziklag and mine trial is going to come as it did with Saul but Saul was not able to find rescue from God but David as the Bible says was strengthened himself he strengthened himself in law in the Lord his God in the deepest of his sorrows he drew near to God that in in reality is his trainer his Lord and teacher 
he drew near to God not to say to him do this but David would never say to God do as I please but instead to ask God what he needs to do and this is the critical point no matter what you're going through what is to your benefit is to ask God what do I need to do O Lord what do you want me to do O Lord what do you like me to do that's the question not to say to God do this don't do that and I'm gonna show you the way what would you like me to do O Lord a person may draw near to you with uh, evilness with hatred what do you want me to do God with this person another person may be driving near to you closing um, drawing near to you with uh, wickedness what would you like me to do with honesty on the other hand he, someone could draw near to you with honesty and love what would you like me to do O oh Lord again we should ask the Lord this is what God is pleasing is, is wanting from us and he's prepared to bless us if we act that way Lord should I go after I pursue after this band he does not know anything about them but he knows that God knows all things and he knows where to go shall I pursue after this band in quiet of the Lord I don't know them I don't know where they came from and where they go to shall I overtake them and we need to ask because God replied in that way and I want to ask this from God because God was always a helping hand reached out for David please Lord allow us to have from your heart so that when we draw near for you to be next to us and prepared help for us and God was not delayed and, he's, and he replied pursue for you shall surely overtake and shall surely rescue he took his people and they went out without knowing where they go but God knew all things and he has taken care of all things in other words that there is a uh, person an Egyptian that was left behind and we know the story let us not go in further Analy and further analyze it but he was for three days without eating and he was uh, sick he did not die for three days and he was able to drive them to this band and they were able to rescue their families and take much spoils many spoils over all the spoils but what we need to pay attention to is the reaction we have how quick we are if they were to say just a little bit uh, just a bit a little bit longer that slave would have died but David wept was so, was in sorrow but quickly he came back to his senses what does it mean for you to go come back to his senses it means that he was strengthened in the Lord his God as we read in verse 6 many things are going to bring us down in our lives and we cannot imagine them now things that the person cannot imagine prior to that trial how would be how would it be able for a person to understand that the Amalekites would attack Ziklag and they would take capture everything many times God is going to allow things to happen in your life the what is important is your reaction and for that reaction to be immediate and what is the reaction you need to have God Lord please help me and he was strengthened how himself in the Lord his God how was he strengthened as he was full in the spirit because there's no other way for you or anyone to be strengthened in the Lord there's no other way other than the Spirit of the Lord 
because the Spirit of the Lord is going to bring you power when it comes upon you and it's going to lead you to all the truth. And in that way, the trial of Saul was to his demise as he needed to even visit a medium. And the trial of, of David was for a new start towards a new start and blessings a new life blessed and glorious the difference is great one was trusting the other and was accepting all things with humility and love with love and truth but the other was boasting wanted to do everything through his own desires and his own decisions my dear brethren we are now reaching the end we are at the end it's not just this virus we are at the end and what I need to say is to myself of course and then to all of you be aware keep watch and pray so that you may not drawing, be drawn into the trials because our heart is wicked and maleficent and let us always understand that we are the center of two different fights of Satan to take us away and God Christ to win us over. Amen.